What's up, everybody? Jason and Joe here. Tastes like music. Today we're talking about the new box set, the Let It Bleed version of Tim. Uh, this has been highly anticipated, something that replacements fans have been waiting for for years. And honestly, a huge stumbling block for me into becoming a huge replacements fan, even though I enjoy the replacements, is the sound of those records. So I was interested to, interested to see how far they could take them and, and how much they could be improved. It's always interesting when they, you know, a band with like a classic album, like does the remix experience. Because, you know, I hear a lot of people that say, you know, Tim's a masterpiece, Tim's their favorite album ever. It's really hard for me to believe that with the production the way it was. So it's like, okay, if this is really as good as it's, you know, really going to sound like this is the peak Tim. Like, is this the best album of all time? I don't know. I had the original Tim at a four. I think it's a, a good album. Murky. It's very muddy. I felt like the songs maybe were just buried a little bit for my liking. But like, I'm, I'm not a huge Replacements fan. So like what I think of a mix probably shouldn't matter at all. But I was more interested in hearing like what other people thought of it, because for me, I don't know, it is really going to change how I feel. Doubtful. But maybe it did. Or maybe it didn't. Did it for you? I mean, you're a bigger Replacements fan. Yeah. So, uh... You're the production guy. So did this chain? Are you now the biggest Tim fan of all time? Is it your number one record ever? No, it's not my number one record ever. And I'm not the biggest Tim fan ever. But I think the difference is unbelievable. I think it is just mind blowingly like so much better. Um, it was remixed by Ed Stasium, who engineered for the Ramones and he engineered. Uh, Talking Heads 77, uh, produced for the Ramones later on, produced uh, some stuff for Living Color and Soul Asylum and Marshall Crenshaw and the Smithereens. And uh, so he's got a, a pretty good track record, especially with with like within this genre, I think, uh, the kind of like late 80s, sort of like punk ish. And yeah, it's just he cleared out all the muddiness. There's greater separation between the instruments. Most of that terrible digital reverb sound is gone. And, and it's just night and day. The clarity and the energy is so much higher. And, and there's some things that you now hear that were totally buried, totally muffled, that are coming through, bringing new life to the songs. You can actually hear uh, some like really cool backing vocals on tracks that were almost completely buried. And then there's even some tracks where there's like guitars that never made it to the final mix at all that were on the master tape that are now included, these extra guitar leads and stuff. And why they were left off, I have no idea because I think it all adds nothing. Like there's nothing new that was added that takes anything away from, from the record at all, I don't think. So yeah, I think it is night and day difference. Maybe the biggest difference in any remix I've ever heard. Yeah, I do think it's probably the biggest difference in any remix I've ever heard. It doesn't even sound like the same album to me. And I actually don't like it. I really think it sounds... I'm not going to say bad because it sounds great. But like, it doesn't fit my idea of the replacements at all. And I... And I which is weird because I thought it would because like I'm usually not into like that murky, punky sort of like dirty sound as much. But to me, the replacements needs that without like that murk and that dirt and like the weirdness of it. I don't know. I, I heard all these new leads and stuff and I didn't really like them that much. They're very kind of like noodly, like they don't seem to add much to it. Uh, I thought the bass, you know, maybe I'm just like misremembering, but like the bass didn't sound as good to me. And I know like everyone complained about the low end on the bass on the original, but like there's something missing. Like it, it wasn't as prominent now. And I don't know. It just, all these songs kind of felt thinner. I hate to use middle of the road because I always use it. 
but it felt just kind of like a college rock album instead of something like dirty and weird. And I actually listened to the 2023 remix, not the Ed Stasium one. So there's the Ed Stasium, there's a 2023 remix of the original album that doesn't have like all the Ed Stasium, like, you know, the new guitar tracks and the instruments aren't nearly separated. That was the mix I liked by far the most. It kept a lot of the dirtiness and the weirdness. And it's kind of like that whiny, you know, replacement sound, like a little more of that punk uh, sound. I still got some of the, the drum reverb, but the bass was great. It really kind of came to the forefront. And I don't know, it, it felt to me like that was what should have been, you know, the Holy Grail. Like that sounded way better than the original because the, the levels were a lot better and it was more balanced. But I just feel like the Ed Stasium remix takes away too much of what makes the replacements the replacements. And then it, it started sounding way too much like Paul Westerberg as a solo artist and Paul Westerberg after Please to Meet Me, where it got like way too ordinary college rock, sort of future indie alternative, whatever you want to call it, like way too clean and polite. And I don't know, the 2023 remix kind of best of all the worlds for me. Yeah, so we should have mentioned that at the top, but uh, there's the Ed Stasium remix, and then there's the remaster of the original mix on the second disc, which is what you're referring to. Um, I could not disagree with you more. The, the Ed Stasium remix is what, in my mind, I have always wanted those records to sound like. Get all of that 80s junk off of like those 80s effects that are so bad, they sound terrible, get rid of them they they are totally wrecking the sound of this band and they're gone i think it's great and i i never want to listen to the original tim again <laughs> ever again throw it in the trash to me the ed Stasium remix sounds way too much like late 90s 2000s rem like it's it just so like it's almost like sterile in its clean uh, cleanliness that it just doesn't maybe I just don't like the replacements that much and I don't want to hear like all that other stuff. And, you know, maybe the dirt kind of adds to the charm of the original, but I, I was not, not impressed, not, not digging it. I don't know. I am shocked. I thought this was going to be for sure. Just like, I know. I don't, I don't know what's, I, I just don't know what's missing. It just, it, it doesn't, see it didn't hear didn't seem like the same album at all to me like all these things that i was noticing is like i don't like that that much like i'm glad that was buried like all these little guitar leads and just something about it kind of rubbed me the wrong way in any any event the two videos that we're recording here back to back the review of the latest national record and this one i think both very much illustrate how much production and mixing matters. And I think when it came to the national record, I think the, the lack of dynamics on that, they could have done something in the mixing to pull a little more energy out of those songs. And here, I think whether or not you like it more or less, there's an obvious like huge difference. And it does like, these are creative decisions. These aren't just like things that just happen. Um, so People sometimes get on me for for talking too much about production and, and mixing and things like that, but it totally changes the feel of a record. And I think this is a, a clear example of that. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like on one hand, like you have the replacements as like this sort of punk, um, you know, out, not like outlaw. What's, what's another good word for it? They're a punk sort of, you know, underground outside of the mainstream and this new mix of Tim puts them like straight, like major sellout. Like this is what, you know, the major labels wanted to do to them. And Tim, the original version is like the, this is what the replacements wanted. Like we're still going to be dirty, messy, alcoholic failures. And maybe that's what I want from the replacements instead of that sort of clean, like major label alternative 
you know, Messiah band that I think people now will assign them even more so with this new mix. I don't know if that's true though, that that's what they always wanted. Like the, I don't think, I don't think the replacements ever liked the original mix. I think that's the whole thing. Tommy Ramone fucked it up. That's true. I bet Paul Westerberg hated it, but I bet the rest of the band maybe didn't hate it so much. I don't know. Because Paul Westerberg was obviously trending into that cleaner direction anyway, because that's exactly where he went after he basically, you know, became the, the solo act. So maybe that's what he always wanted, but I don't know. I, I like the dirty, alcoholic, you know, fuck up replacements better. Well, I was going to close this video just saying, like, let us know how much you love it down in the comments. But now I have to say, let us know which <laughs> side are you on? Do you agree with me or Joe? Are you feeling the new mix? Do you prefer the remastered second disc? Or are you standing by the OG? Let us know down in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. Thank you.